Suppose f is a nice smooth function. Given just a few values of f, but not its formula, how can we estimate the derivative of f at a point? We can start with the definition of f prime of x. When we know a formula for f, we have all kinds of tricks that avoid actually taking this limit. But if we just ignore the limiting part, we do get an approximation based on just two values of f. We call this a finite difference formula. We've used this approximation before. It's the secant line approximation of the tangent line. Of course, there are many ways to draw a secant line. If you use the points x and x minus h instead, then we get a new finite difference formula. The first one we call a forward difference, and the second one we call a backward difference. The distinction is whether we are looking ahead, looking forward, or backward relative to the point x. Now, how could we use the values at all three points simultaneously? The obvious answer is interpolation. Let's set x equal to 0 for simplicity. So then we can write out q of x, the polynomial interpolant for the three points we've referred to so far. I won't say how we get this, but you can see that q is a quadratic function of x, and you can check that it interpolates the three points. So we use this formula to compute q prime of x. Finally, we estimate f prime at 0 by q prime at 0, which is a simple linear combination of the f values. This is our third finite difference formula, and we call it a centered difference. Note that f of 0 dropped out of the result, even though it was included by q, and that's the result of a symmetry. In general, we could use the same process to estimate f prime at 0 using a linear combination of values of f at equally spaced nodes around 0. The a, k are called the weights of the formula, and they're constant. They're the same for every f that comes along. The same formula works to find f prime at any value of x. We just add x to the argument of, x, of f prime, as well as all the arguments of f values. Nothing else needs to change. So we can write all these formulas just for the case of x equals 0. Remember that the weight a0 is always anchored to the spot where we want to get f prime. This property is called translation invariance or shift invariance. For example, the standard formula applies to values at negative h, 0, and h in order to estimate f prime at 0. But if we wanted to evaluate f prime at 6, let's say, then we would use values at 6 minus h, 6, and 6 plus h with the same weights. This process of interpolate, differentiate, evaluate can be carried out symbolically for any arrangement of equally spaced nodes and you can find tables of the finite difference weights in many books. Here I've written the, ca the cases of centered and forward difference formulas for different numbers of nodes. Remember that the finite difference formulas always imply a division by h. Now what about backward differences? It turns out that these are not really different. You just negate the forward difference weights and reverse their order to get the corresponding backward case. For example, here's a three-point forward difference formula. 
The related three-point backward difference formula just replaces h by negative h everywhere. Or if you look only at the weights as you go from left to right, then for the backward difference you negate and reverse them. We can also estimate derivatives higher than the first derivative. For example, we can use the same interpolant q as before and compute q double prime at zero to stand in for f double prime at zero. This gives a centered second difference. In general, if we want to write out a finite difference formula for f double prime using a combination of nodes with equal spacing h, then the result has to be divided by h squared. The most general situation is to have a collection of r nodes with non-uniform or arbitrary spacing. We repeat the same process of interpolating by a polynomial, differentiating the interpolant, and then evaluating the result. There's no longer any sensible definition for h, so we just write a linear combination of values at the nodes. Since basically anything can happen with the nodes, you can't really tabulate these weights. But there is a pretty simple recursion for computing them, and that's implemented by a function in the book. Here I'm going to show some finite difference formulas in action. I've defined a function f, and I've defined its exact derivative as well so that we can compare our answers to the truth. So here I'll take one value of x and h, and compute the exact value of the derivative, and then for comparison I have the forward difference backward difference, and the center difference, all evaluating estimates of f prime at x. So as you can see, they're all kind of close. The centered is much closer than the other two. We'll see in the next section that it's not an accident. Next I want to show a different way of computing the same things where we isolate the weights of the formula more so you can kind of see the, the formula in two steps. In the equally spaced case, this is what we would call the weights of the forward difference. This is the one that gets applied to f at zero, or f at x, and this is the one that gets applied to f at x plus h. And then the forward difference formula is one over h times the sum that sum is actually just the inner product between a weight of vectors and a weight of function values. And so that's how I've written it here. It's the same computation as before, just expressed using a little linear algebra. Always with a backward difference, we can reuse the forward difference formulas by putting a minus sign. And then the f values go from right to left instead of from left to right. And then finally, here are the weights of the centered formula. So there are three points involved, x minus h, x, and x plus h, but the weight at x is zero. So that's why it didn't appear in the formula as written up here in line seven. But if we write it in this style, it does appear as a zero. And these get the same results as before. And just to show it's the same formula no matter what x is, here I choose a different value of x, and I reevaluate the center difference, but this is the same code as before. And again, we are close to the derivative. Now, the book shows a function called fd weights, which will find the weights for you on a given set of points. The one thing to keep in mind when using fd weights is that it always computes the derivative at 0, not at x. 
so you always have to set your nodes up so that they are relative to zero. So in order to get the centered weights, I put in the three points minus h, zero, and h, and I ask for a formula on the first derivative. And that's the same as the centered formula divided by h. The term weights is a little bit ambiguous because when the nodes are equally spaced, we generally use the values without h in them, and then we divide by h when we do the computation. But for general nodes, there's no such thing as a value of h anymore, so um, the numbers that come out from this would be called the weights. It's just a little bit of context dependence there. Here's a set of non-equally spaced nodes. And again, if I want the derivative at x, I have to subtract x from those nodes because FD weights is always producing the derivative at 0 and I have to use the shift invariance of finite differences. So here they are. And I can use them much the same way. Note that this is a column vector, unlike the row vectors I was using before. So I have to use a transpose on the weights to get an inner product between the weights and the values of f at the nodes. And finally, just as a little bit of a fun aside, if we use format rat in MATLAB, it expresses answers as rational numbers. So that means we can get the weights that appear in finite difference tables anytime we want, just by setting the node spacing h equal to 1. So here are one-sided difference formulas, forward difference formulas on 3, 4, and 5 nodes. These are the same that appear in the table in the book.